Welcome to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. In the second to last episode of the Pit Lane Parlay experience with Harding's Time Runner Racing, joined by driver of the number 88 car, Colton Herta. Colton, first, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, you had a kind of tough middle of the year. Does having you know a veteran crew like you do kind of help you know buoy you when the uh, when the emotions are running high? Um, yeah, I think it is important. Obviously, they have a a lot of experience in the sport to uh, yeah to calm calm the nerves, I guess, and and to keep everyone focused. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it can't really be a bad thing when guys have a lot of experience. And that's not to uh, take away from even during that stretch, you know, qualifying eighth or ninth for the five hundred and winning pole. Uh, I forget what track that was at at this point in the year, but uh, Road America. Thank you. Um, so you know, we're about ninety percent done. Got two races left. How would you describe your you know your full rookie season in IndyCar? Uh, it's definitely been a learning experience, but uh, I've enjoyed it, and I think. Um, kind of surprised myself at times and and then uh yeah there's a lot of ups ups and downs and i think the ups were great and at times unexpected as well how good sure. we did but um um we also had had a lot of downs as well so just an, i think a normal rookie season of trying to get get everything out of the way and trying to get consistent runs in for next year would be uh you know the most ideal situation so with that being said is there one thing that you look back on the year and you go, I want to, I want to redo? Maybe a track or maybe a moment. Probably Road America because we were so dominant there. But um, unfortunately, we, uh, you know, we, we had a mistake in the pits um, with the fueling. We didn't quite get plugged in. There, there was something wrong with the, um, with not with the fueler plugging in, but something wrong with the car, um, and it, it wasn't taking fuel for the longest time, and it was really slow when it did. So lost so much time in the pits on that race um just because something broke on the fueling so um but yeah that race you know we qualified on pole um by a pretty good yeah pretty good margin um and yeah we were definitely the dominant car and we really should have won that race um and and even though we didn't win it we should have at least gotten second because you know rossi kind of pulled away from the field and dominated that one but um probably if i could redo that that one or maybe indy indy was tough yeah, <laughs> just going tough going, to going out on lap yeah. four yeah it is. indy's a tough place you know between that and I, I i compare what happened to you in a way to when connor daly caught fire on the pace laps yeah. a couple of years ago like you can't predict that's going to happen yeah. and on the biggest race of the year something it unfortunate sucks. yeah it's, it sucks um you know there's plenty of Colton Herta 2020 rumors uh, all over the internet, all over, you know, news articles and whatnot. Does that make it difficult for a driver to focus on the remaining two races? Are you able to block that out? And if so, is there any, any thoughts on 2020? No, it's, it's interesting to, uh, to have a lot of interest and, and, um, you know, it kind of, tells you that you're doing the right thing and and obviously if if you're wanted by a lot of teams it's it's really cool it's a good feeling but um you know in the same sense you can't let that get to your head um you don't want to underperform um before the end of the season uh as far as 2020 goes um you know i think i'm pretty close on 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 deals but um still you know not taking it away from the the Harding Steinbrenner crew, you know, still fully focused for these last two events, and wherever I end up, um, you know, it, I've said it in multiple interviews. Wherever I end up, it has to make more sense than where I'm at now. It has right. to be more competitive, um, or else why would you do it? So, um, just taking that into consider consideration, obviously, it's a it's a big decision. You don't usually get it in a lot of sports where you make your decision on where you play or where you go you know yeah exactly you know a lot of these you know baseball and hockey and all this you're getting traded and it's not 
most of the time it's not your choice. So um, it's a little unique that, that, that in racing it, it's 100% your choice. Uh, before we talk more racing, I'm going to go off topic here. And I, you know, I think I mentioned in an interview I did yesterday. I still have this question from the Hinch and Rossi podcast, uh, but I did enjoy it. TV show you've been binging either during, you know, race weekends or, uh, you know, during some downtime. I'm trying to think. I did. uh, I just finished Game of Thrones this year. Did you like? Did you like the last season, or are you on the bandwagon? Uh, Not so much. uh, It was okay. I think (laughs) it. It hopefully it leads into something more interesting. I hope like, you know, I've heard that maybe they'll do like a. Spinoff. Yeah, spinoff following. Aria or whatever yeah. they do. Um, so, in that sense, I thought it was good to set that up, but for, like, to be the ending of, you know, what was it, six seasons of... Seven or something. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't... wasn't too happy about it. It was too dark for me, too. Like, yeah. not, not, like, dark as in, you know, a lot of killing and stuff, but just... I just couldn't see anything. <laughs> Okay. The, yeah. the brightness yeah. of the episodes was terrible. I, you know, that that one episode with the crazy battle, and I know this was all over the internet. I, I mean, I was messing around with my TV. I thought the brightness yeah. settings were wrong. My <laughs> wife was upset because she thought I screwed up the TV. Yeah. Um, so you're not the only one. It no, was very they confusing. Just did a terrible job. Yeah. Um, right now, though, I'm watching a TV show on HBO called Power. Okay. Um, it's about a drug kingpin in New yeah, York City. Yeah, I've seen the, seen the previews. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's with um, Michael B. Jordan uh, and uh, 50 Cent. Okay. Are There's they... some other guys. I think it's the guy from Peaky Blinders, actually. I don't know. I'm not... Ooh, don't quote me Peaky Blinders is another fantastic show. I've, I've watched the first season of that. There's just too many shows out there now. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta focus on one at a time. Yeah, I, I don't know how people... I, I'm always late to the party. Like, I was three years late to Breaking Bad. I was late to Game of Thrones. I, I was late I to... I didn't even do Breaking Bad. It's, it's good. I mean, listen, my favorite show of all time will always be The Wire, and I watch it once a year, every year, all five seasons. Uh, I just finished... Uh, what day is it? Friday? Mm-hmm. So I just finished Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so Michael B. Jordan was in the first season of, of The Wire. One more. I think... The Entourage is probably like my all-time favorite I still TV show. That one. Oh, it's hilarious! I've seen the movie. I have the mo- Well, the movie is kind of like a good representation of what uh, the TV show is. I've seen bits and pieces of it from friends when I was uh, when I was in college, mm-hmm. but never. never no, never it's pretty funny. I, I enjoy watching the Entourage. Show. All right, so back to those uh, sort of, sort of a racing question here. Are we going to see your band make an appearance at Laguna since it's sort of close? Are you? <laughs> no, everyone's asked this. I like to keep it keep Completely it separate. separate. Yeah, because I kind of do it as a you know a break from racing yeah. thing. So um, you know I, I don't like to kind of mix the two. I think um, one of my you know my best friends since you know like sixth or seventh grade, John, uh, will be there. He okay. he plays guitar in the band. So um, but yeah, he'll he. Some of my friends they usually go to like Long Beach or, yeah. or in this case Lagoon. I'll have some people come out to that one as well. So before we look to Portland, uh, Gateway was uh, you know pretty strong race for you, but also it's been a fan favorite in the in the now three years it's been back. Is there anything from a driver's perspective that Gateway, maybe from a promoting perspective or on the track perspective, that they've done that's made it such a fan favorite so quickly? I think they promoted the hell out of it, yeah. and Bomberita did a really good job promoting it. Um, that's really all it's down to, you know. You see, usually, the promoters that do a really good job get get a pretty good crowd, you know. Like, Mid Ohio yeah. does a really good job. Road America doesn't promote it a bunch, but they don't really need to because yeah. it's such a renowned track, and everybody yeah. wants to go there. That we always get a good crowd there. But Indy does a good job, obviously. Indianapolis 500. Um, I'm trying to think of some other places that did a good job. St. Pete always does a good job. Toronto yeah. always does a good job. Well, Toronto does the thing where you get in for free if you donate blood yeah. through Honda. Um, and that's the best way to bring a crowd is free stuff. Free, yeah. Yeah. free anything, free paddock pass. Exactly. I think, I think Portland's doing that this weekend for the blood oh, drive. Really? Uh, cool. It might be tomorrow. I don't, I don't oh, know. Good. Um, so last year... Portland was a pretty crazy race, especially, you know, the first lap. Uh, you know, how are you approaching your first, you know, venture this weekend at Portland? And 
have you gotten any insight from your dad who raced here you know more than a couple years ago yeah. no i haven't gotten anything from my dad um so this is actually the first place i've ever tested an indy car okay uh, it was about it yeah it was about a year ago um but yeah so i think that that's gonna hopefully help um i've finally have track that i have some experience at in an indy car yeah. um even though it's only a, a day of testing it should help quite a bit um but yeah obviously we have al jr here as well we've got um all the andretti guys here to help um and yeah um let's see here you've been part of one of the strongest indy car rookie classes at least in you know my recent memory you know, what does that mean to you as, you know, being part of such a strong rookie class? No, it's, it means a lot. Obviously, um, you know, I think Erickson's not going to be here this weekend, so yeah. that's probably going to drop him out of the contention yeah. of Rookie of the Year. But, um, you know, him and him and Felix have been really tough to beat. Um, obviously, Santino's been really quick on the ovals as well. So there's been a lot of guys that have a lot of really good background um, and, and – you know, already rich racing history. Yeah. You know, they're rookies, but they've done so much. Um, they're only rookies to IndyCar. So, um, but no, it, it, it's it's really cool. If, you know, to race against these guys, and obviously makes you a little better when it pushes you harder. So you're only now. I'm I'm doing the math in my head here. Forty something points back in the rookie of the year standings. With double points on the line, the last race in Laguna, you're still going to be racing hard for Rookie of the Year potential. No, yeah, for sure. A um, hundred points to win, yeah. so um, it, that'll that'll make the gap. I think the gap. I'm not sure exactly what the gap is to P2 in points. Like, f- if you finish first to second in points. It's like 15. Or I thought like it was that. like 35 yeah. for the next, but I. Oh, for the double points. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's gonna be, yeah. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, obviously, that, that that can give it a huge point swing, so um, anything's possible for sure. Wrap it up with two questions here. Uh, one, this is a little bit of a fun one. Every IndyCar legend has a crazy nickname, whether it be Super Tex or you know some of the funnier ones out there like Danger Mouse. Uh, if you're going to give yourself a nickname after your rookie year, what are we going with? Um... So this is a nickname I was actually given okay. in, uh, when I was racing in Europe. It was Hooligan Herda, <laughs> and I quite like that. All right, we'll stick with it. I like yeah. it. Uh, so, again, thanks very much. You know, Best of luck this weekend, Laguna, and you know, look forward to talking to you in 2020. Uh, if you are going to give a speech to the next class of IndyCar rookies, whoever, you know, Oliver, whoever it is, what are, what are some of the advice that you would give the, the incoming rookies? Um, you know, I think stay focused. It's they are very long races. Um, you know, I think that's kind of what I forgot. It's not a sprint race uh, at the beginning of the year, and and you know you don't realize it until you you actually you know you're worn out in St. Pete and it's lap 45 out of 110, and then you're like, holy crap, these are really long yeah. races, and I still got like two or three more pit stops to go. Um, so. You know, if you give up a few places on the start, it really doesn't matter at all because you're going to have so many opportunities to, to make it back. And the biggest thing is just keeping a clean nose. And um, Rookie of the year is usually the guy that finishes the most race and races and is, you know, the most consistent. And, you know, you're going to have weekends where you're just not going to be there. Everyone's everyone's had those. You know, Rossi had it at NDGP. Yeah. Uh, Dixon had it. Um where did he have he he also wasn't no he was good at ndgp Gate, gateway, gateway yeah yeah Te- even texas up until the race he yeah. wasn't super impressive um but yeah i think you know even even the veterans do obviously the rookies will have a little bit more of a tough time at some of these places but um i think it's important to see that you know your your seventh quickest that's if if you're just going to get a seventh place finish just take it 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 sucks there's going to be those days where it's just going to you're not going to have it and you're just going to finish seventh or eighth and that's going to be the best the absolute best case scenario so just take it and and move on and obviously 
you're gonna have weekends that you're gonna be very quick, you know, like we've had this year, NDGP, yeah. Road America, Coda, yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of places, so, um, yeah, it's it's obviously a lot more fun than doing indie lights from from my standpoint. A lot more races and um, obviously a lot more buzz about the series. So, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much and best of luck this weekend. Thank you.